Hello and welcome to today's webinar on CAS Inspire, preparing to teach and lead computing. My name is John Chippendall and I will uh, be your host for this session. I'm joined by my colleague Sarah Zaman, who will be moderating today's uh, session and bringing your questions to today's panel. Uh, we're both uh, community leaders supporting our communities up and down the country. Now, this webinar is part of the CAS Inspire series, and CAS Inspire is a series of resources consisting of live webinars with expert panelists discussing topical computing education matters, in which the audience can get involved. So get your questions ready. Also featured are videos teaching computing concepts, podcasts, and careers inspiration webinars as well. During the session, please use the question window on the right-hand side of your screen to ask questions. All attendees are in listen-only mode, and the top window the top of the window has an orange rectangle which can be expanded or collapsed to give you the tools um, in GoToWebinar. If you would like to download a copy of this webinar and or click uh, click on the slide deck, both will be available on the CAS website in due course. Uh, if using social media to engage with the session today, use the hashtag for the event, which is hashtag CASinspire. Uh, during the webinar, please type any questions into the question window. I'm sure I've said this just a few lines above. And at the end of the session, if time allows, uh, Sarah is going to collate and pose the questions to the presenters. So, talking to the presenters, without further ado, I will introduce them. I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Wendy Piccinini. Okay. Thank you. Wendy even wrote it phonetically for me. I do apologise. Isabel. Isabella Leggio and Matthew Winpenny Smith. Uh, so, Wendy is a CAS Community Outreach Manager for the schools in London and East of England, and her role is um, to support CAS community leaders and promote interest in CAS and facilitate the setting up of new uh, communities. And was previously a primary uh, teacher. Isabella is a primary computing specialist teacher with over 20 years teaching experience, and for the far past 10 years. She's combined specialist computing teaching with advisory support for schools through her educational consultancy and has recently written for fantastic projects such as Barefoot Computing and the NCC. And Matt has been teaching computing since 2004 and is currently assistant head um, with digital strategy and computing subject leader at Headington School in Oxford. Alongside this role, he is a CAS master teacher, a primary CAS community leader, a BCS certified computer science teacher, Raspberry Pi certified educator, Google educator, NCC facilitator, and a CIOP ambassador. Wow, what a wealth of experience we have with us this afternoon. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to hand over uh, to you and I will be back after your sessions with Sarah to pose any questions. Thank you. Thanks, John. Just bear with me while I share my screen and then we will get started okay hopefully you can see my screen i don't know if someone could just um let me yeah. know we Thank can you. see it. i was gonna say i can't see everybody now so um uh, oh, hang on mine's just glitched there let's try that again oh, apologies there we go okay Right, so um, I'm kicking us off this afternoon. Uh, welcome to the session, Preparing to Teach and Lead Primary Computing. Um, and uh, you're getting a sneak preview on this screen of our new website. So if you go to Computing at School, it doesn't look like this at the moment, but we have got a brand new website coming shortly. So all the screenshots that I've taken are from the news website. And so you can look forward um, to seeing it shortly and um, I just wanted to show you what happens when you click the primary button which is on the big red square that you can see on our screen um, there and this takes you to the primary section. This section is available on our existing website and we have pages uh, for early years for Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 and this is where to go to get started. Um, so if you've come to this session and maybe you're an ITT 
a teacher trainee or you've just started your NQT or maybe it's just a plus one for you and um, you're new to teaching computing, I'm really pleased that you're here. I'm going to talk through some top tips for you. And if you're leading computing, uh, maybe you studied at a university or maybe you didn't and you've just been asked to lead computing in your school because I know in primary uh, that can happen and you're a little bit worried about where to get started, well, look no further as it says at the top of this screen because Computer Net School is a fantastic organization and we are here to support you on your journey. So I'm gonna talk through in my presentation at the top tips really that we mentioned on our website in a little bit more detail. So first thing, first top tip, um, to start you out on your computing journey is to recommend that you join your local CAS community. Now, computing at school is, as it says on this slide, um, it's a community of individuals. We're all passionate about education and particularly computing education. Um, it says there are currently 270 local communities, but it's quite hard to put a number on it because um, that number changes uh, all the time as other people come along and um, volunteer to run our communities. And as it says, um, the majority of them are run by teachers for teachers. Um, so it's great to engage with your local CAS community because you can uh, connect and network with teachers uh, close to you. And through the CAS community, you can also benefit from expertise in a much wider community um, because our communities go across the whole country and even further than that um, so they meet once a term online um, in person or both so i've had to update this and um, going back historically a lot of our meetings were face to face and then we had the pandemic um, which meant that all the meetings went online and now we're kind of looking at that sort of hybrid approach going forward but however you're meeting um, these are opportunities to come together with other computing teachers and just talk and share ideas and pick up tips and find out what really works in the classroom and um, learn from one another. So um, moving on to the next slide. This just gives you a picture of what our community looks like. This is a screenshot from one of our um, online meetings, as you can see. And just wanted to show you that um, we're a friendly and welcoming community, very diverse, um, and it's fantastic. You can see bringing everybody together just to chat and, um, and to share those ideas. On our new site, um, you will be able to search and find your community. And you can do that by searching on post by postcode or town or by a leader's name or the name of a community and all our communities are named after the area um, where they are, they are located. Um, so I do encourage you to have a look and find uh, your local community. And once you've clicked on a community, you're able to join it or contact um, the community leader and you can do that on an existing site as well. Um, all the events that that community is running are listed there and also out on our events page and you're welcome to join any event that's happening. Um, if it's obviously if it's a hybrid or online, then just sign up if you're interested and start benefiting from expertise, as I said, right across the country. Another way to engage with the wider community is to engage through our social media channels. We have a CAS uh, primary community group um, and uh, as you can see from the screenshot um, this is another place to find out about our events it's a place to um, ask questions and um, seek out support and also to share your expertise with others so please do encourage you to uh, join that group on Facebook if you haven't already we're also on Instagram and LinkedIn so the information about that is at the bottom of the slide. And um, recently, more recently, we've been starting um, these Instagram live chats um, and they happen on a Wednesday on a fortnightly basis at 5 p.m. for half an hour. Um, so if you're in, on Instagram and you'd like to um, join us for those, then the next one is coming up next Wednesday. Top tip number two. Um, this is a guide that came out quite a while ago, 
we know that because we've got our old branding at the top of it. Um, however, it's extremely popular, it's still popular, and it's a fantastic quick start guide for primary teachers. And um, you can download a copy of this guide. I don't know if uh, one of my colleagues, Sarah or uh, John, would be able to copy um, the link and put it into the chat. I can see it's quite a long one, um, but you can get it through our existing website and pop that in for people um, to uh, take a note of. But again, we will share the slides as well. Um, but yeah, that's a direct link there for downloading it. And as you can see, um, it explains um, the more trickier terms. So things like abstraction. Um, what is abstraction? Uh, if, if you've got primary colleagues or yourself, you're asking, wanting to know what different vocabulary means in the computing curriculum, then it explains them in a nice, simple and straightforward way. Um, it also explains what makes a good computing lesson. So lots of top tips. It goes through the whole of the computing curriculum and it's just a fantastic um, guide uh, for primary and a kind of a good reference book and starting point. So do check that out. Um, and download that and, and let, let co your colleagues know about it and other people who might be interested who haven't seen that before. Top tip number three, and um, I'm going to invite Sarah, who um, isn't one of my out outreach managers like myself, but also uh, works as part of the uh, National Centre to speak uh, about this section as well. I don't know if you can still see my slides, but they've gone off my screen. Can you still see them? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, do you want to just explain um, what your role is and what an SME does within the National Centre? And then I'll talk about the other parts that are on there. Yeah, that's fine. So uh, one of my other roles, I am an outreach manager, um, but I also work for the, the NCC. So I'm a subject matter expert, a primary subject matter expert up in the northeast um, and our role really is to work alongside I can't remember how many hubs there are I think there's over 40 hubs across the country Matt is actually uh, works at one of the uh, hubs in the south of the uh, south of England um, and we yeah we support the hubs um, and we we can provide support on curriculum um, we can look at um, where your you know support on where your staff are up to with um, skills signpost them towards courses um, anything really that uh, your school um, is 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 looking for really to improve the um, teaching of computing um, so yes that's what we and I will put actually I'll put into the chat as well um, where you can go to get in touch with your and uh, nearest hub, your local hub and your local SME so that you can find out um, more about what they offer. Thank you. Me. That's brilliant. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so the NCC is the National Centre for Computing Education um, Computing at School is part of it. And um, there's the address up there if you want to go and check it out, Teach Computing. Um, dot org and one of the most exciting things on there is the teach computing curriculum which is a complete and a free scheme of work for teaching computing and um, there are courses that are bursary funded specifically for primary so check those out but more information there on the website there we go Number four, start a code club. Um, if you are leading computing in primary, think about starting a code club. You're often asked to run a club in the school. Uh, when I was leading computing in my local primary school, I started one. It was fantastic because everything is there, ready to go. All the resources are done and you can literally start straight away. So do check out code club. Um, if you haven't heard about it, it says nine to 13 year olds, but I ran it in Key Stage 2. Um, and you can run it in that way by using the older children, the year five to sixes, to support the younger ones. Um, and I've got some fantastic projects that children can do. Number five, uh, sign up to receive the Hello World magazine. And this is produced by Raspberry Pi, who are another partner within the consortium for the National Centre. Not many people know about this, but it's free. Every teacher can receive a copy of Hello World magazine. You just need to go to the website, put in your details, 
and you will be subscribed for free. And it's a fantastic way of keeping up to date with um, everything that's happening in the computing world. Lots of our community leaders uh, write articles in there. So um, another way to find out teacher to teacher what's happening um, in computing education. Number six, and I've put this at the end um, only because Isabella shortly is going to be speaking all about the fantastic world of barefoot. So didn't want to miss it out, but didn't want to mention too much about it. And uh, she's going to be talking about it very shortly. But um, definitely check out barefoot. And final slide. So just to quickly recap, a call to action. Join your local CAS community um, and start engaging with other local computing enthusiasts. Um, do engage through our social media channels. Don't forget to download the Quick Start Primary Computing Guide. Definitely go to the Teach Computing website for the scheme of work, for your opportunities to do CPD and uh, also a primary certificate. Think about starting a co-club, subscribe to Hello World magazine and do follow us on our social media channels um, and all the information is there. So I'm going to hand over now um, to Isabella. Just bear with me while I stop sharing my screen. There we go, Isabella. Over to you to hear all about um, the fantastic Barefoot. Great. Uh, one second. Okay, everyone see that okay? Yes, brilliant. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to have a, a whistle stop tour of um, the Barefoot resources and what's available for you to um, support you in your teaching of primary computing and actually cross curricular because um, I think all of the Barefoot resources can be used across um, a range of subjects. So that's brilliant for cross curricular links. So um, I've put the web link on the front there if you haven't been there before so you can have a look at that um, barefootcomputing.org. So just a quick intro on what Barefoot Computing is. So it was initially established by the DfE as a national project designed to help primary teachers um, with their computing curriculum. And it ori originally focused on computer science, but now um, the resources are much broader and cover some parts of IT and digital literacy. Um, we're going to go through some of the activities now, just so you can see the kind of format and the range really of, uh, of what's there. Something that I think is really important um, about the resources is that, is that they are developed by teachers and for teachers and informed by academic research. So we know that these are all resources that are actually going to work in the classroom. So you don't need to worry about that bit. That bit's been done for you. Um, so the first thing is there is a lot of stuff available on Barefoot and I've just picked out the kind of main bits that I think you could have a look at. Um, so I'm going to introduce the primary activities, uh, so the resources for supporting primary age children. Quick look at the Climate Champions resources, which are brand new. Um, we'll mention the Early Years resources, which are also fairly new and um, a really, really lovely um, computing resource now available for you if you're early years or if you have colleagues in early years. Um, we've got online safety resources for all of our uh, all age groups. Um, and I'm going to tell you about the workshops that are available for you and for your colleagues um, if you want to do a little bit of work on your own CPD around computing. Uh, and then I'll show you the self-teach resources. So lots to do there. But let's just um, start with a little look at the Computational Thinkers poster. So you might have seen this perhaps in, in computer suites um, or in, uh, you know, as you as you uh, visit schools, etc. So this is uh, the primary Computational Thinkers poster and this outlines the key concepts and approaches um, that make up computational thinking. So you can see on the um, left, we've got there the concepts. Um, some of those might be familiar terms, some of them perhaps not so much, um, but uh, anything that you haven't heard of will be explained and um, examples of how to teach these as well as understand them for yourself are all included in the Barefoot resources. So concepts on the left and then approaches on the right. The approaches you might find a little bit more 
familiar because um, these are often things that you uh, are just doing in, in uh, across a range of subjects. So they're not particular to computing, um, uh, but so hopefully those terms will be a little more familiar to you. Um, that poster is available for download from the website. So if you uh, want to do that, we'll show you the link afterwards. Um, so this is just some of the activities, the primary activities that you can see here. There are absolutely um, tons of, of different cross-curricular activities there. Um, so you can see here we've got five to seven, we've got seven to 11, we've got nine to 11, then we've got SCND, so a really nice range, um, and then the early years, as I mentioned. So if we just have a little look um, at a couple, I've just picked out six of the Key Stage 1 activities. Um, it was quite hard to pick six, but I've just picked six that I really like using. Um, so hopefully they're ones that uh, lots of people will find useful too. So the first two that you can see there are all based around BBOTs which um, most schools have um, and you've probably seen before. So there's a BBOT basics activity, uh, which is like just a sort of getting started with BBOTs, and then a BBOTs one, two, three, which is a lovely activity, which I'll show you how that looks in a second. So they're both programming activities, um, strong links with maths, but actually you can uh, link them with, with anything that you happen to be, any topic you happen to be working on. Um, then we've got a Scratch Junior tinkering activity. So you remember tinkering was one of those approaches that we mentioned. So just sort of um, having a play and investigating and seeing what what um, what happens when we um, do various things. This one uses the Scratch Junior app, which is um, a free app that you might uh, like to use for Key Stage 1 programming. So there's a really nice activity plan for you there. Um, just uh, if you want to sort of get going, if you haven't used Scratch Junior before, it might be worth having a look at. And then coming down to the second row, we've got Colourful Kits over on the left, which is a really nice data um, activity for Key Stage 1, which uh, is where people start to learn about attributes um, and they use attributes to solve problems. And they do this in the context of uh, sports kits. Um, so uh, using lots of logic and, and looking for patterns in sports kits. So that's a lovely activity that you can have a look at. Um, Pizza Pickle in the middle is a nice debugging one. So debugging was also one of those approaches on the Computational Thinkers um, poster. Um, and uh, that uh, gives you ready-made problems, if you like, for, for children to um, find the errors in and then fix. So that's their debugging. Uh, and then crazy character algorithms is an oldie, but a very goodie. And uh, I've actually taught it, I think, from all years, probably from year one to year six over the years. Um, and it's really lovely unplugged, so it doesn't need any technology um, activity to do uh, based on writing good algorithms. Um, lots of the activities in Barefoot will be unplugged, not all of them. Um, some, some will be based around technology, but lots won't. Um, so having a quick look at the key stage two ones, and again, I've just picked out some here that I think work really well. Um, code cracking on the top there is actually a set of six lessons, which is really lovely, um, really great for links with history of computing, looking at Alan Turing's work and in um, code cracking in World War II, um, and really, really fun. The kids absolutely love doing that. So that's a whole unit of six lessons there. Um, then there's lots of Scratch activities on there. So if you've been tasked with, um, you know, you know you need to teach Scratch, but you're not quite sure where to start or what to do, these are really nice Key Stage 2 activities um, based on a maths quiz. So um, this one is about selection, but there's also one about variables as well. So if you know that you have to teach those things, it might be worth having a look um, at the Barefoot resources. And then over on the right, we've got Modeling the Internet, which is a really nice unplugged activity on um, uh, being, if you like, the internet. So the pupils take on roles of different parts of the internet. So something which traditionally I think can be quite difficult to teach or certainly difficult to make fun <laughs> um, has been turned into a really nice fun activity for them. So that's modeling the internet. Um, we've got abstraction down at the bottom there, which has lovely art links. So unplugged lesson on um, abstraction, picking out the main things um, when they're doing sketches for partners to guess um, what they're sketching. So quite simple way of teaching abstraction. And then in the middle, we've got crystal flowers, which again is a really lovely activity. So this uses um, the prim stages, which you might've heard about when you're um, teaching programming. 
um, and it uh, so it's essentially predict uh, run. Oh my goodness, predict run. <laughs> Someone help me out. Investigate. investigate, modify and make, uh, modif yeah, modify and make. Yeah, <laughs> that that's I, right. That I just tripped me up. Um, so that uses the prim uh, approach um, to uh, work on programming there. And then data dash, again, is kind of linked to the sports and uh, data activity in key stage one, um, but this time involves spreadsheets. So um, really nice ways of looking at data and analyzing data. Um, and uh, looking at the speeds at which different athletes run. So loads of nice key stage two activities there too for you to check out. Just so you can see kind of how they look or what, what the kind of format is. Um, this is the BBOT123 activity that I mentioned, which starts with um, uh, the idea is that children have to program or write, should I say, an algorithm for a BBOT to um, draw out a digit so these kind of digital clock style digits um, and they have to work out the algorithm for that so which directions it needs to go and which order it needs to do those um, make those moves in and then they test out that algorithm with a, a, a fake bot which is just a little picture of a b-bot and they test it out and they can refine it and debug it if they need to and then of course they can go on to um, actually run it uh, on a bbot and test their test their code on a bbot and what you can see on the right there is everything that comes with the um, activity so all of the resources in all of the activities are provided as well so here you get the pictures of the fake bots you get the command cards which the children can use you get the digits ready to print out so it's all um it's there's not too much work for you to actually do other than read the lesson and uh, teach it which is really nice so everything's provided for you um the newest resources in uh the set are uh, called climate champions so these are designed to um bring the whole school together to make planet pledges and you can see here we've got a key stage one activity um, and a lower key stage two activity and an upper key stage two activity. Um, and they all um, use a different kind of tool to make the uh, pledges. So key stage one are using um, a digital painting app. Uh, lower key stage two are doing some stop animation and upper key stage two are making films. So really nice uh, activities to, to check out um, based on um, climate change, planet pledges, um, looking after the planet, that kind of thing. So have a look at those. Um, and then the early years resources I mentioned. So probably over the last two years, I think the early years resources have gone from not very much to an absolutely wonderful set. So um, there's so much there now for early years. Um, the seasons resources that you can see there on the top left uh, are sets of activities. So each of the seasons will have around three activities um, all to do with that season so the autumn ones have just come out uh, time for autumn so for autumn we've got lovely activities on um, making garlands with patterns um, oh, a really nice algorithm one on pumpkin soup uh, and a really nice maze uh, leaf labyrinth one um, for, for directions through mazes um, the winter and spring ones um, are written and will be out within the next uh, month or so. So they'll be out well in time for winter and spring. Um, but they're really worth looking at. Um, we've also got cyber resources um, starting from early years. So uh, they're also available on the early years tab. The link is at the top if you wanted to go straight to the page, but you can just get everything from the Barefoot homepage. And then we've got Boats Ahoy and Busy Bodies, um, which are two sets of activities uh, around topics that we know uh, early years settings work on uh, a lot and then over in the top right there you can see we've got a version of the computational thinkers poster specifically for early years uh, we've got a computational thinking overview specifically for early years and how it looks in an early years setting and why it's important um, and where it links to um, the uh, eyfs um, development matters um, uh, and early learning goals and then we've got some really nice prompt cards that you can download which were actually a result of a teacher um, an early years practitioner asking for them so that the other practitioners in her nursery could have them 
um, just sort of as prompts as they're going around doing their activities um, for sort of questions they could ask kids to make sure that they were really um, getting the using the right kind of language really so they're lovely and they're available for you to download too so absolutely loads of stuff for early years and it would really be great even if it's not your uh, stage if you could share that with early years colleagues uh, a few examples of the early years algorithms yeah, Molly, i'm not sure if you saw me I, I i i popped up now i would this very it can you hello i don't think you can see me because you're presenting i'm just conscious of time and it's very rare that i would say stop shouting about how amazing <laughs> barefoot is um, and thank you for the reminder that I need to get our winter EYFS resources out as well but I'm just conscious that we're trying to fit in loads and we've got Matt to come uh, okay. in a second as well so um, is there, it, are there slides that you want to jump to just to finish off is that so, okay yeah maybe so maybe we'll skip this one and maybe I'll just um, outline quickly online safety and then the barefoot workshops sounds good I'll try and do it in one minute. Okay, I'll or time less. you. Or less. <laughs> okay, so online safety starts with uh, four to six years. We've got some lovely kind of Where's Wally style activities on Keep It Safe where children are looking for locks. This is all based around locks, um, passwords, permissions, sort of the basics of cybersecurity. Five to six, uh, five to seven again goes on to uh, permissions who things belong to, are you allowed to borrow things without permissions, and a lovely cyber snakes game. Um, and then on to seven to nine, we've got great activities based around the um, Computer Misuse Act, um, where the children act as being a jury, which is lovely. Um, nine to seven, you're the cybersecurity expert, where they're looking at, um, uh, what are they looking at? They're looking at uh, programming, so it's links with programming and the fisherman game. So tons of online safety stuff there. And the thing that I was going to say about the workshops is that you can join online workshops, either individually or with colleagues. Um, there's two workshops available. One is like a sort of intro level onto computational thinking and what it's about, um, lots of ideas for activities. And one is um, the kind of next step from that onto the um, programming concepts. So you can book those via the website. But everything that I've showed you is available from the website and it's all free and you just have to make an account and then you can download it all. How's that? Yeah, I think that was uh, you had sort of five seconds left, which is fantastic. So thank you. Th thank you so much. There is so much on Barefoot. Um, that it's, uh, it's a challenge to fit into uh, a small slot to shout about everything that you want to shout about so but we will we'll hand we'll we'll pass on over to you matt oh yeah uh right let me just present my screen um i wonder if you can make me presenter so i can do that whoever's got presenter and <coughs> then i'll turn my camera off uh, okay. let's make you. i think i've just done that maybe yeah yeah, yeah i think so okay so can you see my slide? Can you can indeed. Slide? Yeah, okay, yeah, perfect. Can. All right. Great. Okay, so um well you've, you've had the introduction from John about me, so I'll just go on to the next bit. But um yeah, so uh, I basically wanted to give you a sort of a, a quick overview as my role as a as a subject leader of computing. It I've uh, been doing it for quite a long time and just really kind of some nuggets of knowledge I've built over the 16 years of doing it. Um and so I've gone just really go through some tips basically. So um, first of all, obviously it's really important to work with your senior leadership team and align everything with the school development plan. Uh, and alongside that, it's really good to develop an action plan uh, and keep that simple and achievable. So use that SMART acronym to help you with that. Um, and it's just that's just really important so that you've got an idea of what you want, where you want the subject to go, and how you want it to develop uh, in line with the school development plan and, uh, and the, the sort of strategy of the school. Um, and then obviously you need to be working on your vision and your policies. Uh, I've written policies around subject and a vision for the subject, and of course those three I's. Um, don't forget those. So sort of outlining that in your policy what you intend to do and how you can implement it and what impact it's going to have on learners outcomes etc um really important that's something i've learned over the years is obviously find your supporters in school you know people who will support you your initiatives and what you're trying to trying to achieve and that's really important find those supporters and use them to help drive it through 
um, do a skills audit, find out who who are basically you know your supporters and who have the best skills and and so on and so forth, and use those teachers to to help the other teachers who need a bit more hand holding and support, do some coaching and things like that. Start small. That's really important. Don't try and implement a huge whole school you know whatever it is whole school policy or whatever or whole school initiative just start small drip it in very slowly it takes time but you'll definitely get there um obviously do an audit you know what resources have we got what do you need thinking about your scheme of work think about your planning um you don't need to spend a fortune on resources i'll talk about that in a minute um and just use what's out there i mean you've just heard from barefoot i mean barefoot's just one element uh, there are you know there's obviously the national center and then there's CAS and there's huge amounts of resources um, on the communities uh, from all different locations as well so definitely check all the resources out uh, put a list of useful links so please do follow those links they can be really useful uh, for you so let's have a little look so I guess really I'll just sort of top three tips really that I've done over time um, firstly I moved our school to a whole school platform um, obviously that was held handy for when we went into lockdown and so on but you know moving to a platform where you thought about the workflow that's probably you know google or cloud-based platform and thinking about how children are going to work through that that's really helpful take your time you know don't don't try and do everything slowly slowly you know win hearts and minds you know, gradually drip it in and you know it doesn't have to be all done in this academic year this is important as well, top tip number three, which is, you know, don't waste your money, basically. Um, you know, you'll end up, if you're not careful, you'll end up with lots of resources that sit in cupboards and never get used. And actually, what you actually want to do is think about learning and teaching before you invest in those resources. You know, how am I going to use micro bits in the classroom or crumble controllers in the classroom? Great news is, is the NCC and Teach Computing have come up with ways to do that. So um, hopefully that won't be wasted money. But there are, I bet there are tons of resources in your schools that are sitting in cupboards that no one's touched. Um, and there's usually a big box of Lego NXT robots sitting around doing nothing. Um, so yeah, so find those resources. Um, here are some more top tips, really. I've got a few minutes. Um, so don't you don't need to buy a scheme of work. I've spoken to a lot of schools recently and the first thing they say to me is, oh, we've bought Rising Stars or we've bought Purple Mash, or we've bought this, we bought that. And, and I sort of say, that's great, but did you know there's a free one and it's called Teach Computing Curriculum? Uh, and then when they kind of get introduced to it, they go, oh, oh, OK. And so, you know, so you don't need to buy lots of stuff, basically. It's there if you can find it. And again, you know, Barefoot, free resources, CAS, free resources. You know teach computing free resources there is tons so just you know take your time with that don't buy stuff but you don't need to you don't need the latest ipads or laptops or pcs you need some devices that you know ideally connect to the internet that would be perfect you know they don't have to be i7s i9s whatever they just have to be you know a device that connects they can be uh, pretty much any device uh, will will do. Um, you can run things like Scratch on on all devices, so you know don't worry too much about having the latest. But you know make contact with local businesses or parents in your schools who may be throwing away stuff. You know local businesses quite often replace their IT tech quite readily every couple of years, maybe every five years. Uh, they'll be perfect for you, so um, ask them as well. Um, you do need time in your timetable. You need to make sure that you are given time to uh, do computing yeah ideally an hour a week that's what I tend to teach with my children hour a week um, just try and get that time in the curriculum and get teachers doing it basically and again start small think about maybe one or two units of work that will work you know and get those units done well okay you do need to think about infrastructure okay it's important that you work with your you know your IT technician if you've got a technician coming in or you have an in-house technician or maybe it's just you but you do need to make sure that you have infrastructure that works the most important thing being probably a decent connection to the internet um, your school needs a robust Wi-Fi network and a decent connection to the internet and that's something you need to work towards so put that into your strategy put that into your just development plan and get it you know get it sorted basically you do need to plan quite a lot you do need to coach and support and try and mentor uh, people uh, in your school especially if you're 
you know you might be a leader of the subject but you're not actually teaching it as a specialist teacher you might be teaching it through generalist class teaching as well so you just work with those groups of teachers you know there may be 12 or or even more teachers you have to work with so spend time working with those teachers and just helping them uh, if you can get some PPA time where you can get into classrooms and do some team teaching with them that would be really good too I know it's all time I know it's you know it, it's hard but it, it pays off in the end if you spend time with those teachers obviously contact your local teach computing hub um, which obviously um, you know is out there uh, there's a whole website where you can find all your local teach computing hubs make contact with them they're there to help they're there to provide subject matter experts needs analysis you know even just come into your school I've been going into a school regularly for the last you know year year um, going in and helping them you know just you know just being support for them as well so it's really helpful um, so use the teach computing curriculum it's there you you know it's free you use it it's fantastic it's been written by experts i've written some of it some other people i know have written some of it lots of people on this panel here today have written stuff for that so you know use it um i've said that already check local businesses see what they've got available get the time in you know for your for your subject good connections talk to your it technicians work with your teams it's all about the teamwork really um, and this basically just outlines kind of what was said at the beginning, but there is this, obviously, our computing hubs and our communities of practice going around the outside. Um, and I think that's already been spoken about, but yeah, using both, you know, linking to a computing hub, then linking to a community of practice, really important. They can offer lots and lots of resources and lots and lots of time for free. Uh, and also you can get bursaries, which is even better. Um, and obviously, yeah contact your local community of practice we're here i'm the community leader for oxfordshire and buckinghamshire so if you're in the area you know come and see us we're hoping to get back to face-to-face -to -face meetings as soon as possible um but yeah make contact with your local communities loads of great teachers out there make contact thanks very much i'm going to stop presenting and hopefully thank you man that's all right a wealth of information there and from our other two presenters as well. Um, so we're we're coming up to sort of time, but I think we might be able to squeeze in. I don't know if we can squeeze in one question, uh, Sarah, if we've had any through, and then we will also get on to our prize draw as well, which we're doing today. So over to you, Sarah. Okay. Um. Yeah, we do have a question. Um. It was about the prompt cards. So um, obviously the Bethel have got um, the prompt cards yep. for Key Stage 1. Um, and Donna was asking, are there any prompt cards in Key Stage 2? Um, there aren't yet. Um, a good idea. It is a good idea. Yeah, they're, they're still quite new, actually. They haven't been around that long. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking that could it could work just as just as well though. I think up up through the key stages. So I yeah, I think because the idea came about because you often see early years teachers with their lanyards sort of weighing them down with all of the sort of uh, prompts and, and 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 teaching tools and hadn't really considered the idea for key stage two, but it's a nice idea. So leave that one with us. Thank you, Sarah. Brilliant. Um, okay, That's uh, it. So. And we're also thank thanks to everyone that's been that's joined us. If there are any further questions that come up, um, you know, we could there's always the opportunity to engage with everything on across the social channels or uh, in the CAS uh, forum. Sorry, I'm just getting a message saying I'll be made presenter. Thank you. Um, and uh, Sarah, we are also going to do our uh, prize draw. Would you like to uh, explain what that is and go ahead and do that for us, please? Yes, I will. Thanks for that. <laughs> Am I explaining as as well? Um, so um, yeah, we've just we've got a um, a free we've got three free books by the um, brilliant and I think is he here at the moment? Alan Harrison. Um, can you maybe pop up on on the webcam so we can see your face? Are you there? While we're waiting for him to pop up on the webcam, we've got yeah three copies of Alan Harrison's brilliant um, book. Um, and if he does come, then he can explain he a little bit more about it. Actually, just because of the way we've got things set up, so oh, you'll just have to explain how brilliant he he is. And he's uh, he's actually based up in the north with myself, and I know of all the good work that he does with his community. But we've got his book there. Is that right as well? 
That that's right. Yeah. So we've got his book. Um, I haven't got a copy of my of the book at the moment, just next to me. But I do have everybody's names who attended this webinar. Um, in front of me, all on lovely, like really sophisticated pieces of paper here, and I'm going to pick three names who can have win you a got copy Alan's of. Have name in there as well, or have you left him out? Well, I just thought I wasn't. Yeah, I've left him out actually. I didn't think he could have uh, duplicate copies. No, I haven't got Alan. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so we. Oh, there oh, he is. Hello. Hey. Someone managed to unmute me. Yeah, I, I think that might have been Wendy. Was... Thank you, Wendy. It's weird. It felt oh, a little wow. bit like what it might be, you know, being a ghost at your own funeral. You know, you all these people talking lovely things about you, you know, and you can't. I'm here, you know. Um, so I was there listening. And Sarah, that was lovely. Thank you. And John, thanks for your kind words. I am here. So thank you. I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll let you carry if you, on. Sarah. If you just wanted to show us the book that um, three. Uh, yes. People OK. Knew. So my um, my big project last year and um so this hit the bookshelves in july and um it's done okay for a for a niche book computer science teachers it's done okay 600 copies sold so far okay and rising so um yeah it it's got some lovely reviews on amazon so thank you if that was you any of you on this call thank you very much um so lovely and there's a lovely review in the hello world magazine this this week as well so um so uh that's the prize i believe today it and is. It, it's yeah. packed full of um core and hinterland knowledge to uh get you up to speed with computer science aimed at roughly key stage four but really really valuable for teachers of computer science at any key stage just to clue you in on all that why why we're here why we're teaching this today and and little t hints and tips for um every situation and all the the uh, subject knowledge you need in there okay thank you that was a and, much better explanation than i could have done so thank you for that <laughs> and good job you popped up okay so lucky people as i was saying i've got your names in my hat in front of me can't show you the hat um so who who's going to win a copy of alan's brilliant book let's have a look on my scrumpled up piece of paper here and um, we've got rachel kirkham are you still here rachel Let's have a look. No, she's not, but she was here. <laughs> not going overly well. So we'll get in touch with you, Rachel, um, and so that you can get your copy of the book. Um, we've got Amanda. Amanda Rowe, she's still here. You've won a copy. Well done, Amanda. Amanda, could you please pop your um, contact details in the chat? It will only be us that sees that, and then we can get the prize out to you. And the same um, to... To who? Uh, well, I'm, I'm waiting to find out the last person. And the last person is um, Donna Rogers. Well done. Well and done. you're still here. Well done for staying till the end there. And thank you, Alan, for your uh, donation and that great prize. And, and, your, uh, and congratulations no on your efforts. No worries. Uh, publishers happy to uh, dish out a few of these at events like this. So if you've got anything else coming up, even if you've got um, CAS community meetings coming up, you know, happy to pop in and donate a book or two. So um, just ping me an email and I prize will, winners. I, will I hope, do. Fantastic. So, so I hope hope the prize winners enjoy that. And uh, if you don't, let me know. If you do, review me on Amazon. <laughs> if you don't, don't. And on yeah. that note, I'm going to say thank you for joining us today a uh, special thanks to wendy isabella and matt and alan as well um really interesting session with so much to take away um and use in your practice and can i encourage you uh, to share any personal highlights from today's session via social media and the cas website and the hashtag for this series is uh, hashtag cas inspire at the end of the webinar there is going to be a short survey which will appear on screen and we'd be grateful if you would complete that um because that helps uh, give us some feedback and uh, shape the things that we do in, in the future. Um, can, talking about the future, please continue to spread the word about CAS Inspire. We're going to be doing further sessions throughout this term all the way into 2022. So thank you, everybody. And I will say cheerio. And we will see you again soon. Cheers now. Bye. Bye. Bye.